Right, let's build this silly looking thing in Excel for no other reason than, well, because we can. Uh, and if we kind of refresh it, you can see that the data is going into it, kind of randomizes. And it's kind of like LEDs going on and off, maybe in, kind of in graphic equalizer, I suppose you could call it. Things work at the inspiration from um, when I was trying to kind of copy this kind of infographic kind of idea that I found. Uh, and you can see they kind of go up and down and the highest ones uh, are glowing and there's kind of like lights flashing on. So how do we replicate this in a spreadsheet? So first of all, blank sheet, let's zoom in. I don't really need all of it and start with some data. And to get some random data, I'm gonna pick rand array and I want eight columns, one, uh, sorry, eight rows, one column, uh, anywhere between zero and 70. And let's say I'm gonna false, let's make that decimal. So this is your random data that you've generated. Maybe it's real data, doesn't matter where it's come from. First thing I need to is have it blocked in some kind of way. So I can do this as the round function. And you can see if I round it to zero decimal places, it gives me a whole number, but actually I want it more rounded than that. So I'm going to divide that by 10 first. So there are various ways of doing that, but it gets you uh, to here. You could use uh, M round for instance to round it to a multiple, that might help. Now once I've got some block data like this, I'm going to insert myself a bar chart, specifically kind of a stacked one. And we have a look at what's happening here. When I refresh the data, uh, it's all locked off to uh, one, one unit at a time. So that's pretty good so far. Now what else? I want to add these top halves. They're at half high and some of them glow and some don't. So I want a standard top and I want a glowing top. And these are all gonna be 0.5 each. So 0.5 everywhere there. Now if I select my chart and drag this across, there we go, I've added my uh, the top halves. Now I'm just going to say select data, I've done it in such a way that um, it's now automatically labeled these sequences, so that's very useful. Now the final one that I want is background, because this is not just a background, this is actually another chart object in the back. So this is all going to be 8 high. And one thing to notice, you could dynamically set that. You could change it to a particular value. Kind of doesn't matter. So I'm going to add that as well. And you can see it's stacked on the top, which is not where we want it. Um, so I'm just going to come up to chart design, uh, change chart type, and come down to combo. It's really powerful for doing very really weird things in this software. Keep it as cluster column clustered, uh, stack column, sorry, not clustered. And I'm gonna stick everything else on the secondary axis apart from the background. And the reason you do that is if you do it the other way around, the background will, one would render above it. So you don't really want, you don't really want uh, that there. You want it to be rendered like that. So now we have our background at the top. Now, one thing you can probably notice is a, like, what's that yellow bit doing there? Is this sort of bit off scale? So what I'm gonna do is override the, um, the axes to make sure that the maximum is always eight. So this is where maybe some of the dynamics becomes a little bit more tricky. I'm just gonna make sure that this is always eight. Change it to a different number and then reset it back to eight. It tends to do that. So that's overridden, it's now no longer automatic. And you can kind of see what's going to happen here. Every time we refresh the data, it's kind of locked to one thing. But we've got these two tops still appearing. So let's add in some dynamics to change that. So I'm gonna get rid of this for now. I know that it's there. I wanna replace it with an if statement. I only want this to appear if a particular condition is met. So the logical test, I'm gonna use rank and specifically rank EQ. And the number I want is this column, B2 with the hash to select all of it. The reference is going to be that array. So this is gonna be taken as kind of a fixed array. That's gonna be then spilled down. Um, 
And if that is equal to 1, if it's the top rank 1, I want it to read as 0 0.5, else blank. And there you go. We can see these are 7. Those are clearly the highest number. Here we've got 0 0.5 here. And I'm going to copy that entire formula, paste it into here, and just simply swap the true and false statements around. So a value if true, that is true is now blank, else 0 0.5. And that will spill down once I've deleted those. So you can now see the highest one has this grey uh, box here, the rest orange. Great. So we are now at the point where this is sliding up and down and the highest one is being conditionally formatted for us. The rest is just formatting. So we'll do kind of the formatting now. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of the grid lines. Um, it tends to help. I can do something with the axes later, but I'm not going to cover that. That's just personal choice. Uh, first thing, format with the entire chart selected. I'm going to change that background to black. This is what I had it on originally. I'm also going to select my background. Right click and format the data series. And the first thing you see under the settings is gap width. Change that to 0%. So that means uh, the gap between it is now zero. If I select my blue thing here, I can change the same thing. So now what we can see is we've basically got um, that up and down motion, but it's all blocked off. So we're going to make these shaped. Right. For here, insert illustrations. I'm going to pick my rounded rectangle. I'm going to make this quite large. And then I'm going to round it off to a particular size. Actually, I'm going to make it about two centimeters. So under shape format, override the size to be exactly two. So I kind of know that it's standard. Now my shape fill for this is going to be quite a dark blue and the outline is going to be black. Uh, it doesn't matter if the outline is thick or thin. That's kind of personal taste. Select it, control C to copy, and then select this background. Paste it back in. Ah, now you see it's kind of stretched it and if you were to zoom in and have a look at this it looks a bit pixelated and that is because this is always pasted in as an image. That's kind of an important thing to kind of bear in mind. It kind of fixes it as an image and pastes it in. It's no longer an object that you can edit. So with that in mind, if you do something like this, uh, keep your original <laughs> to kind of make some edits to afterwards. So I'm going to keep that for now. Okay, so fix this right uh, on the background, right click, format the data series, and under the fill options, I've got picture or texture fill selected, because that's what this is. Um, we have options down here to stretch or stack or stack and scale. And I'm going to select stack and scale. I'm going to scale it with one unit per picture. So that's what that option is down there. Close that. Now you can see it's kind of square. Maybe you have to do a little bit of adjusting to make it look square, but you kind of have to eyeball that, but pretty good for now. So my next bit, I'm going to copy uh, this again and make another copy. So this I'm going to then change to maybe 1.9, 1.9. So it's slightly smaller. So will I layer that? Actually make it even smaller than that. I'll go for 1.7. Make it quite quite small. And here, I'm going to get rid of the outline, no outline, fill slightly brighter blue. Yeah, doesn't really matter. This is all just personal taste. Find, some, find the color scheme and stick with it. And then select both of them, align center, align middle, right click and group. So now this is going to be the tile that goes here. And one thing we can also do is if we select the one on the back, so once it's grouped, you can still select the sub objects, just click in there. I'm going to get rid of the outline and actually get rid of the fill as well. So no outline to that either. So now we've got a slightly smaller one that will fit over the top. Now if I control C that and control V to paste it onto there. Ah, I've now put, uh, pasted it in. You can see there's this transparent bit. So this is still scaled to the same size as this other block, but the part of the background is transparent. So it means if I want to change this to say uh, green, if I control C, control V that into there, keeps the same settings with the scaling, but it's changed the color and I don't need to change the background of the, the lit up one anymore. So 
as before, right click, format series, and then stack and scale, one unit per picture. So now we've got these lights kind of flicking on and off depending on how far up it's going. So next bit, I'm gonna create a new version yet again, exactly the same size as before, uh, and change this to lighter. So shape fill, I'll make that the, the lighter blue. And I'm going to also change the height, and this is why it was useful to manually set this to a round number earlier, to one. There you go, it's now half the height. Uh, you could paste it in and scale it down, um, but that'll change those rounded corners slightly. So I'm just gonna zoom in to make sure this is really visible. Um, you notice when this is scaled down by half, the rounded corners are halved. So I'm gonna take the yellow tag and drag it just a little bit to the right. Now the rounded corners kind of match. It would be nice if this was proper vector graphics software and maybe you could um, use, use a proper image editor like Inkscape or something to create these things. You can just paste them in afterwards, but you know, this that's what we've got to deal with now. So I'm gonna control C that, paste it in here, and you can see it now kind of matches. And finally, I'm gonna change this to the, the lightest possible setting. Control C, Control V. So the top ones are now quite bright. Select that, format, and add a bit of a glow as well. It's, well, we can make that better later by editing it. But now that's the basics of it. We've got some conditionally formatted bits highlighting at the top. And we've also got some uh, other lights coming on and off. So. Hopefully that gives you some idea about how to do some more kind of dynamic, interesting infographics. Uh, one last thing before we go, how do you add the data labels to it? Because that was on here, there's data labels at the top. Um, if you add data labels directly to this, you do not get a lot of control about where they appear. You can kind of push them up and down and so on, um, but not a lot of control over it. So I want it to appear above so I'm gonna hack that in kind of manually. Uh, by this, I'm gonna put in label, make it 0.5 high, drag that all the way down, and then I'm gonna put this here. So I'm gonna add this extra bit and format that shape fill none so that it's completely blank. Now add a data label to just that series. And if I change my text fill to white, you can kind of see it. Now that all just says 0 0.5 because they're 0 0.5 high. So if I right click and format the data label, I'm just going to select value from cells. I'm going to put my original data in, get rid of the value there and the show leader lines. Now I've just got the original number, but it's uh, carrying all the decimal places. So I'm just going to drag that down a little bit. And the number of decimal places here will pipe across to here. Uh, finally, maybe set it to a neat font. It's maybe the, the OCR one or da uh, Daytona is quite good for that kind of thing. Let's drop it down. Maybe add a bit of a text glow to that. Yeah, that's, that's lovely and cheesy putting that on. Uh, now, and there we're done. If we start refreshing that, we get that dynamic effect of the numbers pipe across and everything. Uh, we could easily stick a different thing on there using the same um, trick here. If we put a, what is the rank equal to? Maybe we can conditionally format um, that by changing the number, but that's it.